hi guys welcome back to the channel i'm glad that you're watching if you're new to Ivam Tali, remember Ivam Tali is the channel that empowers you, shows you and encourages you to follow your dreams because it's never too late and you're never too old. And part of those dreams that we try to follow at Ivam Tali is the dream to travel the world. And we know that traveling comes with a lot of challenges, it comes with a lot of requirements, and it comes with a lot of um, needs. And one of those is finances, like how to finance your travels. And that's why every time that I find a new way that you can make money as you travel or a way that you can finance your travel lifestyle, I am always keen to share it with you. In today's video, I'm going to share with you a few tips for starting your Airbnb business in Kenya and um, especially in, uh, in this day and area, there's a lot of um, travel that is going on and a lot of people um, using Airbnbs um, instead of hotels. So basically an Airbnb is where you sublet either a room in your house or if you have an entire room that an entire house that you're not using, you let it out maybe on a daily or a weekly or a monthly basis so people use your house, for example, instead of um, staying in a hotel. So obviously tip number one before you start your Airbnb business in Kenya is to create a business plan. This is basically a plan of where you see your Airbnb in one year's time, in three years time, or in five years time, or in 10 years time. So you have to create a proper plan of where you see your Airbnb. And um, if you need like a sample plan, I'm gonna leave a link at the bottom of a plan that I have made for an Airbnb business that you can start in Kenya. Secondly, you have to consider talking to those who have walked that journey before those who have run successful airbnb businesses before those are people who could give you um very um important tips before you start your airbnb business and then number three you have to look at location so for example is your airbnb um so in terms of location you're not just looking at the city for example your airbnb business in malindi in lamu in seme in kosele in homa bikisumu but you're also looking at where in the city is your Airbnb going to be? Is it going to be in the central business district? Is it going to be on Gong Road, for example? Is it going to be in Kilimani? Is it going to be in Westlands? Is it going to be in, I don't know, Machakos? Is it going to be at the beach? Is it going to be up in the mountains? So it's going to be on Langata Road. You have to be really specific on where your Airbnb is going to be. And this will be determined by different factors. So for example, um, if you're targeting digital nomads, you're most probably going to set up your Airbnb um, along Gong Road or in Kilimani because that's where most of the hubs um, in Nairobi are located and most of, um, you know, like restaurants and places that um, digital nomads like to visit. If you're focusing um, on people who want to go on vacation, you're probably going to look at an area with a lot of nature. So maybe like somewhere in Karen, or you're going to look at people who prefer to be at the beach. So you're talking about maybe Malindi or Seme or Rusinga or Kisumu, um, such places. And then the other question you need to ask yourself, where is your Airbnb going to be? So for example, is it a serviced apartment in Kilimani or is it a penthouse on Langata Road? Is it a family holiday home in Malindi or a family holiday home in Lamu? Is it a one bedroom apartment at the CBD suited to business travelers? Is it um, a large beach cottage in Diani targeting family or girlfriends who want to get away or men who are on a bachelor's party? Um, is it a two bedroom house at JKIA targeting those who are on layovers or on brief step stopovers and then you have to ask yourself first who is it for who is your airbnb targeting are you targeting families with small children are you targeting couples on honeymoon are you targeting large groups of friends are you targeting business travelers on a conference are you traveling are you targeting digital nomads on a vacation or travelers on transit so you have to ask yourself such kind of questions so that you can tailor your Airbnb business to suit who your target customer is. And then the other thing you need to ask yourself is, when is the best time to stay at my Airbnb? So for example, is it during the Kenyan school holidays or is it during the European summers or is it during the North American winters? 
is it um, perfect all year round? So like say if it's based in Kisubu or it's based in Rusinga. Because of the tropical um, climate and the warmish weather, maybe it's an all year round destination. Is it more suitable, um, you know, midweek for business travelers who are attending conferences at the CBD? So those are some of the questions you have to ask yourself. And then you also need to ask yourself, why is my property available for rent on Airbnb? So that comes to the question of, so is it an extra room I'm renting out at my apartment or is this an extra property that I'm looking to, you know, to find better use for or is this going to be my main source of income? Those are the kind of questions um, I would ask myself. And then the other most important thing you need to find out is what is your unique value proposition and what i mean by unique value proposition is the benefit that is unique to your airbnb so that is the unique way in which you solve your target customer's problem so this is what sets you apart from the competition so let's say for example um there's like three other apartments close to mine why would somebody pick my apartment over the other two apartments and your unique value proposition must answer three main questions. What is it for? For whom is it? And how is it useful? So in short, what I'm saying is that finding the unique value proposition for your Airbnb is much easier than it sounds. And all you have to ask yourself is how much more different will, how much more different and better will your Airbnb be than the other? Airbnb is in your vicinity or in the same area with you. So let's give it a try. So for example, um, is your Airbnb in a different location? And is that location, is that what makes your Airbnb better because of its location? So for example, if it's an oceanfront villa by the white sandy beaches of Mombasa or Malindi or Sori or Rusinga, that could be a unique value proposition. Is it close to Matatu stands or is it close to the bus stops? That's another value proposition that would work well for somebody who would rather use public transport and maybe wants to experience the local Kenyan culture. Is it in the middle of nowhere in a serene natural environment that helps and targets those who wants to get away from the crowds, who wants to get away from the hustle and bustle of Nairobi? Or does your proposed Airbnb have like a view or something like that? Or does your Airbnb, is your Airbnb one of those houses where a movie was shot, you know? So those are some of the unique value propositions that you can um, use for your Airbnb in terms of location. But you could also get a unique value proposition in terms of pricing. So for example, your Airbnb could be better priced than those ones. So for example, is your Airbnb the cheapest one around town? Do you offer the best value for money? Or do you give discounted prices at certain times of the year? So those are some of the unique value propositions you can give in terms of pricing. And then is your Airbnb um, type different or better than others? That's a different um, angle you can look at in terms of value propositions. So for example, um, I know there's like um, an Airbnb current, it's called the Brandy Bias. I'm gonna leave a link at the bottom. It's quite unique and it's quite different because this is a renovated school bus that has been converted into a cozy and really, you know, distinct Airbnb home and it's tucked right in the serene and beautiful suburbs of Karen. So that could be a unique value proposition, like this house is really different. Or it could be a tree house. So there's like, for example, I know on Gong Road, there's, um, sorry, there's Gong House in Karen that is a tree house. Or maybe it's a penthouse that is overlooking um, the Gong Forest. Or your Airbnb could have some history, like it's associated with a movie that was shot, like at Karen Blixen, for example. That's something that some people really value. So as you can see, there's different, I mean, the options are really endless in how you can um, give different value propositions for your Airbnb. And then the next thing you want to do is look at the overall um, hospitality industry or the overall Airbnb industry in Kenya. So for example, what do Airbnbs in the area that you have um, decided to put yours, how much do they charge per night, for example? So if I want to start my Airbnb on Gong Road, 
how much are the Airbnbs on Gong Road charging for similar um, kind of, um, uh, sorry, excuse me, um, Airbnb. So for example, is it um, highly priced, is it middle range? Those are the questions I need to ask uh, myself and have to consider the value that I'm giving compared to what my potential competitors are charging. And then I have to match this with the value that I'm giving to my customers. So to do this, it's really quite simple. Just log on to um, Airbnb and on the top left side, under search, you enter the location of your proposed um, Airbnb. So let's say for example, I want to do my Airbnb in um, um, Kisumu, for example. Airbnb will populate in a map format the properties in Kisumu together with the prices per night. So check out this one that I did for Namanga, for instance. So as you can see, this one that I've done for Namanga country, County. So when I just click on, go to Airbnb and click on um, Namanga and click on search, it opens up to this page. And I have clicked on show map. Show map. So over here, so my Wi-Fi is really slow today, but you're going to see over here, there's a, it will show me the map of all the accommodations we have in Lamanga, including the different um, prices. So as you can see here, so it just shows me, so there's like $20, $15, and there's even $376. So just from this map alone, I can see um, the range of um, prices per night for a an Airbnb in um, in Namanga. So you can see this, and um, this is Namanga area, and it shows me the different. Um, Prices for the Airbnbs in this area. So you can see these prices ranging from $15 right all the way to $376. And um, on the left side of the screen here is the different um, Airbnbs and the different prices. But on the right hand side, it shows me the map. So I just clicked on show map. And as you can see, so you just do that forever property for whatever location your property is going to be located at. And then the other thing you have to ask yourself is, in the area that you're proposing for your Airbnb, who are their target customers? Who are the target customers for your potential competitors? Are they targeting couples looking for a romantic honeymoon destination? Are they targeting girlfriends looking for um, a weekend getaway that is less than an hour from Nairobi, for example? Are they hustlers? Are they targeting hustlers who are looking for a choir to break away from the hustle and bustle that is Nairobi? Did they target groups of travelers who need large budget accommodation or is it digital nomads on a vacation in Nairobi? And then you could also look at the properties in terms of are they budget accommodations or are they luxury um, properties? So for example, are they like um, an upscale apartment rental in the most expensive neighborhood in Kisumu or are they simple modest properties that even backpackers could afford? Or do they tend, do they um, rentals tend to lean um, towards one end of the accommodation spectrum. For example, they're like everything is either luxury apartment and the other one is really budget, and this leaves a gap in the market for middle range kind of um, accommodation. So these are the kind of um, things that you'd consider. So, for example, during my search, I noticed that there's a shortage of clean, um, comfortable budget accommodation around our national park areas in Kenya. So that's like one area that I see is ripe for um, business in Kenya. And that's somewhere somebody could potentially um, look at. And then other things you may want to look at is, 
these potential competitors, as I'm doing my industry analysis, do they provide breakfast or are they self-catering accommodation? And are they like simply just Airbnb rentals where you just come and get a house or do they offer complimentary breakfast or do they offer both a comfortable bed and assumption breakfast? and like a kitchen facility as part of the package. So those are some of the things that you want to look at when you're doing your industry um, analysis. And then you also want to look at what um, do your competitors, where else do your competitors list their accommodation? So are they all on airbnb.com or are they on airbnb.com and they're also on TripAdvisor and they're also on booking.com and they're also on Jumia? You want to do your research. and. Do they, for example, collaborate with the Kenya Tourism Board or with the Brand Kenya? Um, do they have their own personal um, property websites? Is there some other fast-growing um, accommodation listing and booking website which you know about but your competitors aren't using? So those are some of the questions you need to ask yourself when you're doing your industry um, analysis. And then in terms of um, after you've done your industry analysis, you also need to do your customer analysis. So for example, who are the kind of guests that you hope to have in your Airbnb? And this is important because this is where your money is going to come from. This is your source of income, your customers, your Airbnb customers are your source of income. And that's why it's so important that you understand them in as much detail as is possible so you can effectively and efficiently uh, meet their needs. So for example, when I started operating my um, Airbnb about seven years ago, it was to solve one main problem I used to encounter every time I landed at JKI. So I would notice that there were really this big um, number of people who would be um, lying on the, they would just be sitting or lying on the seats at JKI at very um, wee hours of the morning or very late night flights. And if you've been to JKI, it's one of those airports that you don't want to get stuck in. And for a long time, it really bothered me why these guys would just be hanging around at the airport instead of maybe coming out and, you know, getting some you know, comfortable accommodation. So I started talking to some of these travelers and I noticed that most of them were on connecting flights. Um, they were on KQ and they waiting for their connecting flights to other parts of Africa. And... I also noticed that there was um, like only three main accommodation options at the time. So you were either going to go to Panari or you go to Eka or you go to Ole Sereni. And then there's a few other boutique hotels in Siokimau area. And I noticed there's obviously a gap in the market. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately for most of those passengers on transit, the fact that they weren't Kenyans meant they had to pay an extra um $50 for their transit visa. So that obviously adds to the price of their accommodation when they get out of the airport. So I immediately noted this gap in the market that, and since I already had a property in Embakasi that wasn't occupied, it was like a really um, easy um, decision that I made. And right off the bat, my target customer would be that traveler who is either um, on transit, on transit at JKI and is looking for, you know, a brief um, place to just lay, you know, lay their head or someone with like a very early flight or early morning flight at JKI and they probably live in like, I don't know, Kisumu, Mombasa, wherever. And they want a place to hang out just before their flight um, takes off. So that would be my target customer. And then once you have done your industry analysis, you have done your customer analysis and know who exactly is your customer, you need to do your competitive analysis. So by competitive analysis is basically looking at those um, other Airbnbs that are in direct competition with you. And you have to analyze their business and see how differently you are going to um, offer value to your customer than them. So for example, if your Airbnb is a penthouse apartment in Kilimani, um, overlooking Gulf Forest, your direct competitors would be similar um, accommodation providers in Kilimani area. All the hotels, all the hostels, all the Airbnbs in Kilimani would be your direct competitors. And with your um, competitive analysis, unlike the industry analysis, your goal is to find out all the reasons why 
a potential guest would book the next property over you and then you figure out ways to make your property more attractive than the next property so that's basically what you're trying to do here and this may be in terms of either um the price or um per night or so let's say if everyone else is charging an arm and a leg for a one night accommodation you may want to like slightly um charge slightly cheaper or charge the same price but offer more than your competitors are offering it could also be in terms of accommodation standards so for example, if you walk from Kenyatta Avenue all the way, like where the New Stanley Hotel is, all the way up to Jakaya Kikweta, where we have um, the Comfort, I think it's the Comfort, Kenya Comfort Hotel, that entire route is lined up with only high-end hotels. So starting from Serena, from, um, of course, the New Stanley, if you walk down a little bit, you have the Hilton. Coming up a little bit, we have the Panari, we have Heron Court. And then these Manyata backpackers, slightly just after Integrity Center. And then probably there's the Young Women Christian Association Park View as suits that's along the processional way. So you find that these two are probably the only backpacker accommodations that entire area. And the only backpacker accommodations like are a walking distance to the CBD. Again, that's another gap, clear gap in the market. So you maybe also want to find out, um, look at other factors that what do your competitors provide? So for example, if your competitors only give accommodation, you could consider giving complimentary airport pickup or drop off, or you could consider doing like, I don't know, having a chef or having a cleaner car maybe once or twice a week and you also need to find out if it's going to be complimentary or it's paid for and then you can also look at other amenities that your competitors are offering or not offering so things like free wi-fi or um, paid for dstv or do they provide a washing machine or at least some basic laundry service uh, more about luxury amenities like a gym or a swimming pool or a sauna you know a children play area those are some of the things you have to find out if your competitors are providing and if they're not this could be um, a competitive advantage for you or a unique value proposition so for me what i did i simply went to booking.com and then i started checking out existing um properties um the existing properties and what the past customer had reviewed them and i was more focused on the negative reviews because from the negative reviews, you can be able to see what's really important to a customer. If they're complaining about it, it's really important to them. And um, so for instance, if you check out this review for uh, from a customer who visited 67 Airport Hotel in February 2017, I got to figure out that some of my potential customers' needs, um, so by checking out um, this um, review of 67 airport hotel um, along Siokimau area I got to figure out some of what my potential customers need to be what their fears would be and what their wants would be so for example the review here is entitled an excellent well-run hotel not too far from the airport this one obviously validates my assumption that there was in need a need for accommodation near the airport. At the same time, the Hilton's Four Seasons ETC inside the airport were non-existent at the time. So these ones that are currently, you see like the Hilton and the Four Seasons that are currently at the airport, at the time they were in there. So of course there was that um, gap in the market that I could fill. And then digging further into this review, the customer is complaining about the hotel being difficult to find and even stating the fact that they missed a flight because of underestimating how long it took to get to the airport because, you know, despite being very close. So if you have been to Mombasa Road, you know that between um, between Cabanas, if you're coming from the Mombasa Road, from Mombasa side, to get into the airport, you somehow have to go through the Cabanas, um, around uh, the Cabanas interchange and you could take as long as one hour in that area. It's like a really, really short distance, but you could take as long as an hour just in that area alone. So 
based on insider information, I knew this was something that a hotel might not necessarily tell a customer. But because I'm having an Airbnb, it's like we're really having this personal one-to-one -one, um, interaction with my client, there's that um, opportunity for me to tell the customer, well, the facility may be like, I don't know, one mile from the airport, but <laughs> this is Nairobi. You don't measure um, um, how long it takes you by the distance. You measure it by the amount of traffic, which again, you could never, um, is never certain. And um, last but not least, this customer raved about the availability of refreshments and meals during the day. And I knew, boom, this is something that I could take advantage of. So I took advantage of the, my local knowledge of Nairobi. And for my Airbnb, I made sure to provide complimentary airport pickup and drop-off services. Remember in 2012, we didn't have Uber wasn't as ubiquitous as is it today in 2019. So this was really something that the customers appreciated. And also at the time, JKI did have free Wi-Fi that is currently available. So that means that as much as there was Uber, if there was Uber and there was no Wi-Fi, I mean, you can't get an Uber if you don't have internet. So there was all those things that I took into consideration. And the reason I offer the complimentary pickup and drop off is to also make sure that my customers don't get lost looking for my Airbnb. Again, you know, in Nairobi, there's barely any um, proper address system. So that is something, again, that I had to take um, into consideration. But thank you, Google Maps. <laughs> anyway, so I also stocked the houses with um, my house with complimentary drinks and bites that customers could just nibble on um, throughout the day or night. And this is something that they really appreciated, especially after a long trip. I mean, we could appreciate a cold drink. So you see what I mean? This is just one example. And if you conduct the same customer analysis for your Airbnb, you're really bound to come up with um, many more ways to top your competitors just like i did for mine and then now you also have to look at how your airbnb business is going to operate like for the very first day when you open your doors so we are talking about things like is the plumbing well is there water this is kenya remember water is never guaranteed one day there's water the next day the pipes are dry and the day after there's water rationing so we are looking at things like is there going to be availability of water and when the taps run dry do you have someone to call and then it also involves things like cleaning and um pick cleaning up after the guests leave checking them in when they arrive um airport pick up and drop off things like keeping track of inventory is there enough soap is there enough um i don't know lotion is there enough milk in the fridge and then dealing with customer bookings and complaints remember if you're a traveler like me for example um you could get bookings while you're away who's gonna open the doors who's gonna um, provide customer service who's gonna lock the doors who's gonna clean up and then you also need, a, need to figure out issues such as um Who's going to provide for you internet? Are you going to rely on, I don't know, Airtel and Luminous? Are you going to use Zuku? Are you going to use Fiber? Are you going to use Safaricom? So you have to look at such little things. And also you need to look at the linen. So for example, what color of linen? So in another video, I talk about what kind of linen and what color of linen you should use for Airbnb. Airbnb, I'm going to leave a link at the bottom as well. And then there's also, um, items such as for example um if let's say um issues like electricity we know again another issue we have here in kenya is um frequent blackout so do you have things like um alternate alternative lighting like lamps that you could use for your airbnb or are you gonna use solar and stuff like that so there's also the issue of marketing you know, so you need a proper marketing plan for your Airbnb. So for example, are you going to rely on Airbnb or booking.com to do all the marketing for you? Or, but again, this is going to be determined by the customer analysis that you did um, at the very beginning. And this is where it comes really handy. So if you know who your potential customer is, then it's easier targeting them as you know where to find them 
and what type of marketing will be effective for them. So in my case, for instance, other than um, sharing the link to my Airbnb property on various social media platforms, I made business cards that I would, you know, hand over wherever I went, um, including at the airport. So another option is to create a standalone website for your property using hosting platforms like Bluehost.com. And um, some people also take advantage of Google AdWords and that kind of advertising. It really depends on you. In my experience, though, the most effective form of advertising for your Airbnb was word of mouth from satisfied customers, as well as the reviews that customers left on Airbnb or on Booky.com after their stays. So you could consider that as well. And then, um, again, in terms of um, how are you going to get your money? So most, if you're going through websites like um, Airbnb, for example, they have an option where you can use like Payoneer card or you could get paid via PayPal for, so Airbnb would collect the money on your behalf and then give it to you through the different channels. But if you're using something like Booking.com, for example, it works a little differently because you have to receive the money and then pay Booking.com via M-Pesa or, you know, a bank transfer. So you have to ask yourself, how are you going to receive money from the customers? Um, if it's through Airbnb, you don't have to really worry about it, but you have to worry about how you receive your money from Airbnb. If it's through Booking.com, for example, you're going to have to ask yourself, am I going to um, provide um, POS facilities for my customers who swipe their cards? Or am I going to, am I going to accept M-Pesa payments? Or is it going to be cash? How am I going to know that this dollar note is real? Am I going to accept only Kenya shillings? So those are some of the things that you have to really um, ask yourself. And then the other thing you have to ask yourself is about the licensing. So how is your Airbnb going to be licensed? So for example, there's um, a website called um, the Kenya Community Based Tourism Network, which allows you the option to register your house or your Airbnb as a homestead. Again, I'm going to leave a link at the bottom of how you can go um, about doing that. And then again, you also um, another thing you want to look at is your financial plan. So again, here we are talking about how are you going to acquire your Airbnb property? Is it something that is already in existence or are you going to buy a new property? Are you going to rent it out? Are you going to, I don't know, those are some of the things you want to look at. And then how will you furnish it? It costs a tidy sum of money because you're going to need basic things like a bed, um, probably a cooker, you're going to need a fridge, you're going to need maybe a microwave, you're going to need mattresses and bedding. So, and such could, you know, result into a tidy sum of money. So, a financial plan basically shows you how you're going to take care of all these initial costs. It um, helps you to project your income as well as your estimated expenditure. And I suggest you make at least a three to five year um, financial forecast. And it will help you in terms of determining whether, you know, it's really worth entering into this business. And then you could also have some key milestones for your Airbnb. So for example, when you're starting, what are your goals? What do you hope to achieve? So this is the only way you'll be able to effectively track if you're making any progress with your Airbnb. So some key milestones you could consider, for example, include um, you know, your projected monthly net income. You could look at um, the number of guests per month or in the first quarter or in the first, you know, um, year and then you could look at the rate of growth of your bookings month to month or you know year on year for example this is it going to be you know five percent or twenty percent it's really up to you and then you also have to look at the number of returning guests so you just don't want customers who come one and ever return the more um, you could make your guests come back the better for you and then again other things we'll need to consider are you know basics like um, you know, like the plumbing. So personally, for example, when I started my Airbnb, I made sure that as much as, so most of these um, listing websites would also have an app that you can have on your phone. And every time there's like a booking or a cancellation or whatever, you get a, you know, like an alert on the phone. But personally, I just like, I'm a stickler for like plan, I'm like really plan my things out. I also had like an actual calendar at the back of my Airbnb as well as at the back of my house so that 
anytime there was like a booking, I would manually record it. And I also had a diary that was recorded with everything. So it's really up to you and how much, you know, planning you really want to get into. And then I also had my plumber's number on speed dial. You know, Murphy's law is real. If things could go wrong, they could go wrong. And usually from my experience, like personally, I've like rarely had any plumbing issues on my own house. But the moment I started running my Airbnb, I could run into all manner of plumbing issues. So you want to have your plumber's number on speed dial. And then you also need your DSTV or I don't know, your internet provider's support line. You need it on speed dial as well. And then also issues such as, you know, your um, electrician and all those kind of people. The caretaker, you need to have the caretaker's number. You need to have the watch his number because sometimes your customers will come when you're not there and something else you need to build a rapport with your neighbor there are days where like if it wasn't for my neighbors i don't know what i would have done and especially when you're running like a full-time job you're gonna need help and if you're lucky to have a neighbor who's really kind they could keep the key for you they could you know host your guest before you arrive and open the gate for them so those are some of the uh, things you need to look at and then some bonus tips for your airbnb number one keep your airbnb spotless clean like i don't know how much to stress that number two what you lack in location like i did make up for with excellent customer service so my airbnb was located in embakasi right at the border with juakali so if you've been to that area you know what i'm talking about but i made up for quality service and you know excellent um, customer service and then focus on quality over quantity. A high quality can attract a high price. And then last but not least, be kind and respectful to your guests. They will never forget how you treated them. And if you treat them well, they will always refer you. So that's it for today in terms of running your Airbnb. Let me know if you have any questions by leaving a comment at the bottom. And remember to check out the full post on my website i'm gonna leave a link at the bottom thank you again for staying to the end and if you like this video remember to like it if you have any questions remember to leave a comment and if you haven't um subscribed please subscribe hit the notification bell at the bottom so that you always know when i um, you know post a new video and remember to share this content widely. Let me know when you start your Airbnb business and you're successful. I'll come and celebrate with you. Thank you for staying and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.